Today, friends, our theme for meditation is new life together or apart. I want to ask you a question. If you had to encapsulate your life currently into one adjective, do you think you can do that? Think about it for a minute. What specific word would you use to describe your life today? This current age in which we live pushes us to think that a good life is filled with activities, possessions, a certain image, and a particular job. It seems that if we are not constantly busy, we are not part of the in crowd. All of us, though, had to stay in recently. We were forced into experiencing the goodness of life through quiet, rest, reflection, family time, and being part of the crowd that stayed in. Many people started sharing via social media their culinary pursuits. Social media challenges arose with many scripture passages being posted for the nourishment of our faith. Old-time games were revived. Family worship was made a priority again. Self-love was reintroduced as trending, and the goodness of life was evidently seen as a part from being busy. What does this remind us of? We look at the early form of church being revealed to us through Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. A healthy church, a thriving church. In fact, it is noteworthy that the opening and closing verses of this portion of scripture indicate that the church was experiencing growth. The Good News Translation of the Holy Bible titles this portion of scripture as life among the believers. And I think that's utterly beautiful. Life among the believers. What is life like among us as believers? Can it begin again to reflect this early church pattern? We know that as Christians, we are called into a new life with Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17 clearly says, So if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. So we are expected to be new by the grace and power of God Almighty. As believers, therefore, as church, we need to reimagine what this new life would mean for us as we live in community. One of the four theological concepts of youth ministry is koinonia, which means the building up of community. And we do this a lot among the young people. Indeed, I think that there is, this is essential to all of church, for we operate as one body in Christ one people of God, of the one Holy Spirit. Today, as we pursue this new life in Christ, we see four major themes shining through the scripture passage to show us what kind of church we ought to be. Firstly, we are told that the early church spent their time learning from the apostles. They were ensuring that their faith, their personal faith, was being built up by the word of God shared among them. We can imagine then that what came out of the mouth of the people of God was worshipful, was intended to bring glory to God, was for the continued upliftment of one another. Can each of us tuned in today say that this is always our mission, our way of being? Matthew chapter 12 and verse 34 reminds us, For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Another part of what the early church saw as important was fellowship. And this is actually something we need to encourage more of. Fellowship is defined as friendly association, especially with people 
who share one's interests. Isn't that something you would want to be part of? It is very integral to the knitting together of the community of believers. And it is something that we actually need to practice even within our own homes. And then we see the early church breaking bread together. Yes, especially for my youths, this is the most exciting part of being together as Christians. And as Presbyterians, we love to share food after services, after meetings, after prayer meetings, there is always an abundance of food to share. And why? Because this too builds community. There is much to be said about eating as community, sharing what you have for the satisfaction of another's needs. And then this, the glue to tie it all together, prayer. Where would we be if we did not engage in prayer as a community of believers. God and God alone is the reason for our being. And it is only by his presence that we can achieve this new life. Surely, we can see that new life in Christ brings us together with other believers in the faith in a manner that builds not destroys. So today, friends, this brand new day, as we forge out into the world, I pray that we can truly tap into the newness of life that a relationship with God affords us. Let us take some time to ponder our own lives and allow God's presence to transform the old ways into his new ways, the bad ways into his good ways. Ask God into your heart today and feel the newness that he brings. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.